Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. The Fisher House Foundation was founded in 1990 with the mission to provide homes for veterans and their families on the grounds of major military bases and VA medical centers. After seven years of fundraising and with over $3 million raised, the city of Cleveland will be getting not one, but two Fisher homes. Turn the dirt. A groundbreaking for the two Greater Cleveland Fisher homes was held on the grounds of the Lewis Stokes VA Medical Center in University Circle. Mayor Frank Jackson, a veteran of the United States Army, thanked those involved and spoke of how this was a community effort. But I know that everything that we do in Cleveland and we're successful at, we do it as a community. And, and, and this was one thing that uh, I don't think anybody said no to. It was just a matter of what do I do or how do I participate? And that was because people wanted to honor those who have served and thank them for, thank them for their service. And this is how we do it. Leaders from the Department of Veteran Affairs and Fisher House Foundation gave remarks, as well as Councilman Kevin Conwell, whose ward will be home to the new houses. So it's a magnet and it's bringing energy, not only here for the veterans, you also are fighting for my residents, and I thank you very much, and God bless. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur is thrilled more veterans can have a home here. The self-sacrifice that this represents and the fact that the Fisher Foundation saw this and decided to have two houses here is such a credit to the greater Cleveland community that is serving America, because truly any veteran can come here and may come here to this grand, grand facility. The Fisher homes are projected to be ready early 2019. For more information, visit greaterclevelandfisherhouse.org. Mayor Frank Jackson hosted a press conference to announce the first mixed-use development, which will be in the Glenville neighborhood and part of his new neighborhood transformation initiative. We are, uh, have become a successful city and we can rattle off all of those successes that we had, whether it's in the central business district or it's in the, in the downtown neighborhood or in those neighborhoods that are, are trending and doing well and, and helping to continue the stabilization of stable neighborhoods so they can continue to be stable. But uh, we recognize that uh, the future of the city of Cleveland is in the most distressed areas of the city of Cleveland. That is where the future lies. If we are unable to stabilize and grow and allow for prosperity and quality of life throughout the city, and, 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 and particularly in those areas that are the most distressed areas of this city, then all the work that we've done thus far will be short-lived and cannot be sustainable. So we're not satisfied with just doing a project here, a project there, and it have no uh, sustainable and substantive impact to the neighborhood and wealth creation or quality of life. It was announced that the Finch Group, City Architecture, and Ozan Construction will be creating the mixed-use residential and commercial buildings. City officials spoke about the impact this will have on the neighborhood and its residents. We are a city with neighborhoods that are growing, but we also are a city with neighborhoods that are experiencing some significant challenges. The ironic thing is that you have the haves right next door to the have-nots. And part of the work that we're doing with the Mayor's Initiative is to focus on fringe neighborhoods, those areas that flank where growth zones are happening in the city of Cleveland. And then people from uh, VA Hospital, University Hospital, Case Western Reserve, they will be able to purchase homes right in the Glenville community. And we will have doctors, dentists, lawyers, and scientists, Mr. Mayor, in this community. And our children need to see success every single day. And they will be able to see not only bricks and mortar, Freddie Carter, but human capital. And that's what they need to see so that they can grow up to want to be a doctor and dentist and lawyers. So this is more important than just buildings being built. It's bringing people over here together. To learn more about the Neighborhood Transformation Initiative, visit CleeCityHall.com and check out the TV20 Cleveland YouTube channel to watch the press conference in its entirety. Don't forget to hit subscribe.
Women from the Cleveland divisions of police, fire and EMS, along with other safety forces throughout the city and neighboring communities, were recently honored at a ceremony in the rotunda of City Hall. From the Department of Public Safety, I'd like to uh, express my thanks to all the ladies in public service today. And I want you all to know that you're so much appreciated across all levels of public safety. Cassandra Bledsoe serves as community liaison for the Cleveland Division of Police, and she also emceed the event, now in its fifth year. Bledsoe spoke to us about the theme of this year's program. She believed she could, so she did. It starts within the mind. It starts within your heart, believing that you can. And not only there's one thing to believe, but there's another thing to take action and to actually make your beliefs and your dreams come true. The crowd listened to the guest speakers as they spoke on a variety of topics. Then each table went into breakout sessions for further discussion. Afterwards, a group of ladies were honored with the Community Service Awards for their help in solving a very sad case in identifying the remains of a young boy. The award was given to a detective Carleen, uh, Kathleen Carlin, Homa Bash, Peggy Gallick, and Dr. Spurlick from Kent State University. It was a um, very hard case, a missing child, unidentified, and that was a teamwork of four women who came together to work with that along with our public information officer, Jennifer Choch, to be able to get that information out. It's a beautiful time where the women came together for such a gut-wrenching tragedy to identify that child. TV20 would like to congratulate all of those honored at this year's Salute to the Women in Public Safety and thank you all for your hard work. In a police academy graduation ceremony held in the mayor's red room of Cleveland City Hall, three men were sworn in as Cleveland police officers. You may be wondering why the academy class had only three members. Well, it's because they're a part of what's known as a lateral transfer class. Deputy Chief Dion McCauley explains. The 139th Cleveland Police Academy class is a lateral transfer class meaning that these recruits were sworn police officers for other agencies prior to their application to the Cleveland Division of Police. The Division of Police recognized their previous law enforcement experience and entered them into an accelerated program. They have all completed those courses and they will be sworn in this morning to join the ranks of the Cleveland Division of Police. Mayor Frank Jackson swore in the new officers in front of their friends, family and colleagues. The newly sworn in officers received congratulatory remarks from Safety Director Michael McGrath, Council President Kevin Kelly, Ward 15 Councilman Matt Zone, and Chief Calvin Williams. Coming from another department, I know it's not easy. Uh, you're coming to uh, you know, the, the largest department in the area. Things are a little bit different, uh, a lot faster pace, uh, but uh, be assured that uh, they've received the best training from our academy staff, and uh, we will take good care of them. Everyone at TV20 would like to congratulate Cleveland's newest officers and wish them well in their new jobs. And as a reminder, you can watch the entire swearing-in ceremony only here on TV20. The City of Cleveland's Community Relations Board hosted their third annual Community Builders Conference at the East Professional Center on East 79th and Superior Avenue. We spoke to the board's interim director, Grady Stevenson, about this annual meeting. This conference is put together to bring community leaders, block club leaders, and people who desire to have block clubs together to form an alliance, build block clubs, and strengthen block clubs. We want to share some of the best practices of how to build and strengthen block clubs here in the city of Cleveland. Uh, reminding people that it takes more than just government, but government has to have partners. And so we look for our CDCs, we look for our community groups, we look for our neighborhood people to come together and really build those uh, uh, partnerships in the community that really help to strengthen and make our city great. Mayor Frank Jackson and Cleveland City Council President Kevin Kelly gave remarks expressing why having the community involved is vital in helping our neighborhoods. The purpose of this is really to uh, do community building because uh, I've learned a long time ago that if you have a conversation about what is wrong or even a conversation about what is right and you talk about what should be or what should not be 
and you do nothing about it, then all you're doing is whining and complaining. And you get nothing done. And if you look to someone else to do right by you, or what you represent, and you say they should do it just because it's the right thing to do, then you're foolish because it's not going to happen. The only way it will happen is if you make it happen. But to get people to show up to affect positive change is very challenging, and seeing you here is a great testament about what the future of this city holds. If you'd like to get involved, please contact Community Relations at 216-664-3290 or visit city.cleveland.oh.us. Well, as you know, our city has a rich history and we want to test your knowledge. Our trivia question for this week. Out of the five Great Lakes, Lake Erie is the most biologically productive and is also which of these? A, coolest and deepest, B, coolest and largest, or C, warmest and most shallow? We'll have the answer when we return. This is why you took a second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Don't you know Crash is going the blue container? Mayor Frank Jackson and the City of Cleveland are committed to keeping your neighborhood clean and green through the use of the city-issued trash and recycling carts. It's safe, convenient, and mandatory. For more information, contact the Cleveland Division of Waste Collection at 216-664-3717. How did you get to be so smart? I had a good teacher. Welcome back to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Our trivia question for this week. Out of the five Great Lakes, Lake Erie is the most biologically productive and is also which of these? A, coolest and deepest, B, coolest and largest, or C, warmest and most shallow? The answer, C, warmest and most shallow. At its deepest point, Lake Erie is only 210 feet. It's the fourth largest of the Great Lakes and 11th largest globally if measuring surface area. That's pretty cool. Well, area girls were celebrated for completing a program designed to help them dream big about their futures. TV20 reporter Dan Monroe has the details. The city-run program is called United for Girls and according to Program Advisory Committee Chair Jacqueline Mohammed offers multiple weeks of courses on topics that help teach and strengthen crucial life skills. Last year, uh, as a part of Mayor Jackson's Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative, he desired to have a program that focused on young ladies specifically, then the needs of young men, already having many boy-focused or male-focused programming, and wanted to have something that focused specifically on the needs for young ladies. And so thus United for Girls was born, put together a program where every nine weeks there are a different life skill lesson that's taught by four uh, distinct facilitators at four different locations, including John Adams, East Tech High Schools, Selma George Rec Center, and the Juvenile Detention Center. The rotunda of Cleveland City Hall was turned into a beautiful banquet hall for their luncheon, celebrating the end of the program. The theme for the celebration was Dream Big. The event served as a way to reflect on the various topics they learned about. There are life skill topics. We have a topic for discovering life's toolbox, for example, where a facilitator then gives these young women the tools to use to navigate through life. And from that to financial freedom, to understanding how to be involved in the right relationships, um, having to understand how to control oneself and navigate through life. And then the educational component was there as well, as well as the financial uh, side of the house, understanding how to be financially free. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, who was instrumental in starting the program, welcomed the girls to the rotunda and congratulated them for completing the program. 
it does take some effort to, um, to start something and finish it. Uh, a lot of times people start things and they're unable to finish it for whatever reason, but you started it and you finished it. And from what I hear from uh, the instructors or from Ms. Mohammed, that you enjoyed yourself and you did quite well and she believed that you had benefited from the program. The keynote address was given by Cleveland native Kevin e. Gilmore. Gilmore told the young ladies how she wouldn't let her tough past define her future. Kept running away, kept running away, and I kept running away. So if you've been in the de detention center, guess what? I'm just like you. They were placing me in the detention center, and I was afraid to share with, you know, the people who were there and with my teachers that I am being physically abused at home. So one of the things that I want you to keep in mind as I tell my story is that transparency creates currency. And sometimes we have to unlearn what our parents taught us because if you grow up in any black woman's house, is what happens at home stays at home. And sometimes that can hinder your entire life, depending upon what the action is. I caught up with Gilmore afterwards to find out what she attributes her success to. What is it that, that drove you to get to the top? You know what, I think, <laughs> that's a good question, wow. I think it's been my desire to be able to be something to actually give back. You have to get somewhere to be able to reach back, you know what I mean? And so having the exposure and the access to be able to create relationships to help promote the lives and well-being of foster youth is definitely my motivating force. For more information on Cleveland's United for Girls program, email Jacqueline Muhammad at jmuhammad at clevelandairport.com. At the United for Girls Dream Big Celebration for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. The City of Cleveland continued their celebration of Women's History Month with the Healthy Living Kitchen's Taste and Learn Holistic Health Demo. Chef Yolanda Ramos and Health and Lifestyle Coach Rhonda Sharpley gave a live cooking demonstration and answered audience questions. They tell us further about the event and why hosting experiences like this is important for our community. Today we did, um, featuring fresh local foods, we did spring foods and our theme was calming foods for Women's Health Month. Uh, speaking of foods that are healing, calming, stress reducing, as well as I led the group in the very beginning in a breathing exercise and a little bit of physical movement, all that promote calmness, um, relaxation, stress reduction. What it does is promote awareness of what's available in our city. Um, it helps the sustainability of our city by promoting local vendors and local producers, such as food producers. Um, and most importantly, togetherness. It's a great time to network, to meet each other, dialogue. There's a lot of um, dynamics to the benefits of stuff like this for our city. It's very important, very valuable for residents of the city of Cleveland to connect, number one, with uh, health, health and wellness. So we have our conventional doctors in medicine, and that's wonderful, but this is a little more um, grassroots. It's taking us back to the holistic practices of using natural foods, locally sourced foods, using um, simple things like simple movement, uh, simple meditation, simple breathing, those types of things to promote health and wellness, which supports and undergirds other aspects in uh, public health and other health and wellness um, services that we have within our city. At the Taste and Learn, the ladies were both recognized by the city and given an award, as well as Ward 14 Cleveland City Councilwoman Jasmine Santana, who told the audience what she hopes they think of when they think of her. My primary focus is the health of women. Women development and women's health, top priority. I always said, if we get a woman healthy, the community changes, the landscape changes. Thank you. So, whether it's your spirituality, you know, your faith, your, your um, physical, mental health, all of that needs to be addressed. And I am an example of all that. I grew up, a um, lot of barriers, a lot of challenges. Grew up in a home, you know, with all those social determinant issues that are affecting our communities now. And I had to get myself healthy holistically, mind, body, and soul, before you could actually see me here standing, speaking to you as the uh, a new elected official. 
To learn more about upcoming free events at City Hall, visit city.cleveland.oh.us. The first ever Rock by CPL was held at the Cleveland Public Library's main branch in downtown. The objective was to bring the educational programs that the Rock Hall does on a daily basis to the community. The mission of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is to engage, teach, and inspire through the power of rock and roll. And we really do believe that rock and roll is an art form that is unique. And it's got so many things you can tie it to. You can connect it to the history of the United States, to uh, social justice, uh, to science. How does an amplifier work? These are just some of the things we do at the museum. And to be able to take this music that we all love so much and find a way to use it as a powerful tool to get people to learn, uh, that's what we try and do every day. And we're excited to be here today to do that. It's a great way to partnership with the library and bring folks in from all the 28 branches to celebrate the history of rock and roll and get excited about the induction ceremony that's coming up. DJ Fatty Banks was on hand to teach people how to make music and show why it's important. I just feel like anytime you can use arts to reinforce uh, literature or curriculum in general, uh, it just goes over well with the kids. They're so in tune with their, their technology, phones, uh, music, videos. Anytime you can incorporate that into the classroom, uh, your, your teaching lessons is going to go a, lot, a whole lot smoother. Rock Hall Induction Week is all this week, April 7th through the 14th. For a list of programs and events, visit rockhall.com. Fifth grade students at Nathan Hale are combating germs in their schools while getting a lesson in science. CMSD reporter Shannon Kantner has more. Germs can be lurking just about everywhere, from our cell phones, bathrooms, and of course, they love to hang out in schools. But a group of students wants to make sure more kids get to school by keeping germs out. You've heard of the Ghostbusters. Well, get ready to meet the Germ Busters from Nathan Hale. Thanks to a partnership with the Cleveland Browns and Gojo, the makers of Purell, these students have turned into school hygiene experts, helping to boost their immune systems and school attendance. <laughs> nasty. I was disgusted. Gross. It was a little gross. Just some of the reactions when students discovered how easily germs spread. It was like everywhere. Now these fifth graders are on a mission to teach germs a lesson. First, as soon as we come in the classroom, we get hand sanitizer, then we get the bottle of spray, we spray it on everybody else, we wipe it down, then we get the wipes and then we wipe our desk down and our chair down with it. But that's only the beginning after the students caught Saxonitis, an epidemic you probably haven't heard of, created by fifth grade science and math teacher April Saxon. The not so scary symptoms include excitement for math and excitement for science. It includes homework completion and it also includes perfect attendance. So actually, I want Saxonitis to spread. And it sure did. Using a special glow lotion and black lights, students saw just how quickly germs can spread. And their teacher saw those Saxonitis symptoms spreading too. Students were more excited than ever about science and getting to school. It really, really drove home the point of when you come to school sick and you spread germs, it literally goes everywhere. And so that really, really had them rethinking germ prevention and how germs are being spread and how we can prevent a lot of that. The fifth grade has taken on a mission and they're owning it as far as self-guided learning and self-inquiry where they wanted to research the different types of germs. So they're calling themselves the germ busters because I don't even have to say anything now. They are encouraging each other to sneeze in your elbow and not on your hands. Um, if somebody needs tissue, they know how to open the doors. So they're really, really taking this a couple steps further than what I ever thought they would. The germ busters even gathered samples throughout the school and followed the scientific method to determine which place was the germiest. We use petri dishes to store them over time. We found the stairwell had the most fungi in it. The railing, to be exact, so the germ busters took action. They shared their scientific findings with the custodian and continued to raise awareness around the school. I need a germ buster over in the technology area. When we're walking down the halls, they're screaming, don't touch the rail. The virus is growing aggressively in the Petri dish. <laughs> so that's it's awesome. All the time they tell me, Miss Why, you touch the rail. And, but then I'll have one of my germ busters come through in the clutch, but we'll take care of it. 
And so they'll give me the Perel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The Germ Busters also presented their research and results to the Browns during a special visit from Chomps. One little germ might turn into millions of germs in your body. And every time you come from somewhere touching stuff, you have to get hand sanitizer or wash your hands. Or your paws if you're Chomps. And it's working. Hygiene is better in the school and teachers have noticed fewer illnesses. So mission accomplished, Germ Busters. Germ Busters is a way to help prevent you know, illness, and so the kids can get to school and we can educate them. Several of the germ busters told me this project has inspired them, and now they might want to become a doctor one day. The Browns and makers of PRL have brought this school hygiene program to nine other schools in the district. Reporting from Nathan Hale, Shannon Kantner, CMSD-TV. Thanks, Shannon. Those kids are after my own heart. Make sure you're always washing your hands, you guys. Well, don't forget to check out the Waste Collection Calendar to see if it's Bulk Week in the city of Cleveland. For more information on your trash and recycling pickup, including Bulk Week, delays due to holiday, and guidelines on how to properly set out your cans, visit the city's website at city.cleveland.oh.us. Thanks for watching TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.